Hi guys and welcome back to What's Happened, the easiest way to keep up to date with what's been going on in the world of science this week. And so without any further ado, let's kick things off. First off this week, we have had some pretty big news in the tech sector. The big bad wolf Uber have found themselves in a bit of a sticky situation. Back in October 2016, Uber was subjected to a hack of quite large proportions. The data of 50 million people, including both Uber users and Uber drivers, was taken from their Amazon cloud storage. And yes, recently there have been a lot of companies that have come under fire from hackers. However, the issue here isn't the fact that Uber was hacked, it's the fact that until this week we didn't know that this had happened and actually this is quite upsetting and worrying as if you're an uber user and so are your friends chances are at least one of your data was taken by these hackers the way that uber managed to keep this under wraps was by paying a ransom of a hundred thousand dollars that was requested by the hackers which is fine the problem was resolved and no one's data was going to be leaked but for a company that's already been stripped of its rights to operate in london due purely to reckless behavior and questions about the safety of the service uber really aren't doing themselves any favors here and now onto some super duper happy news, at least for any animal lovers like me. Here is a pretty cool fly. It's called the alkali fly, and although it may look like a common or garden blue bottle, it's got some pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. You see, the alkali fly from Mono Basin in California can dive, which may not sound special until you remember the countless occasions that you've had to fish a dead fly out of your drink. How these alkali flies manage to dive without getting wet is actually pretty cool. What they do is they produce some unique scuba gear in the form of a skin tight air bubble around their bodies and the sole purpose of this is to prevent them from getting wet and there's a very important evolutionary reason for them developing this trait. Mono Basin in California, the place where we can find huge swathes of the alkali fly population, is incredibly rich in salts and sodium carbonate which means that the water is incredibly alkaline so not only would the flies drown if they got wet but they'd also be covered in all of these salts and the sodium carbonate. The result of this is that they would dry out like a prune and probably suffer some serious burns from the alkalinity of the water. So yeah, they're cool, I like them, and you guys should too. And moving swiftly on, we are going to talk about what's been going on in the realms of space this week. To infinity and beyond! And actually, quite a lot's happened. First off, scientists now have an idea of what an amazing extrasolar asteroid might look like. Oumuamua, the asteroid in question, has been passing through our solar system recently. And some super speedy scientists did some pretty cool maths and they found out what it looked like. And it's a little something like this. The asteroid is about 400 meters long and shaped like a cigar. What makes this so impressive is that the asteroid is traveling at about 59,000 miles per hour or 95,000 kilometers per hour for all you crazy cats using the metric system. Oumuamua is the first extrasolar object that we've properly seen passing through our solar system and the fact that we actually know what it looks like is absolutely astonishing. So yeah, Oumuamua, you're great. And secondly, in extraterrestrial news this week, we've got some bad news for all you lovers of Martians. Every dry season on the planet Mars, some dark patches have been appearing on some of the sand dunes. What's interesting about this is that a lot of people have postulated that this might actually be running water. However, a team led by Colin Dundas of the US Geological Society has put these rumors to rest. He's shown that these dark patches called Linne are more than likely just some dry sand. No. However, we are all still entitled to dream that Gary, Keith and Charles will beam us up and take us to the stars. Beam me up, Mr. Spark. And finally, some scientists from the University of Reading reckon that if we burn more fats, we can help stop global warming. Think that one Fats, although they're demonized by the healthy eating community, are actually just really, really long chains of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. And much like when you burn anything else made from carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, you get a reaction a bit like this. However, due to the sheer quantity of carbon in these fats, you need a lot of oxygen to burn them. And sometimes there's not enough, so you end up with things called carbon particulates, which in a lot of cases are just smaller fats. And these smaller fats can aggregate into fat droplets. And when these fat droplets are in the atmosphere, they act as nucleation sites for the formation of clouds. Simply put, they allow water vapor to condense around them and form the clouds. However, the media have connected this fact and the fact that clouds reflect heat radiation from the sun back into space to suggest that deep fat fryers can negate climate change. However, they're forgetting what the other products of burning fats are. And these are, as I showed earlier, carbon dioxide and water vapor, which are two of the biggest offenders when it comes to global warming. So what we need to do here is take a step back and realize that yes, as much as fat droplets might start producing clouds, by burning fats, we're also sending up a huge number of greenhouse gases. So any positive effect will be negated. And that's what happened this week in Science News. As always, I'm Sam and thank you so much for joining me. I love you and I I will see you all next Friday to catch up with what's happened in Science News. Ta-ra!